So you set out to RV in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Well, guess what? You're breaking the law. Here are 21 laws that RVers break every day. Yes, you. You guys have no idea how many laws there are in this country that RVers break every single day across our country. Some of these laws are probably stupid, but then the other half of them are created for stupid people. Our viewers are unintentionally putting people at risk right. when they don't follow these laws. Yep. Yeah, but now you have no excuse. Now you'll have no, no excuse. No more plausible deniability. <laughs> we also went ahead and tried something different in this video. We're gonna put bloopers um, of our police station escapades, our shenanigans as Mercedes would call them throughout the video. We really hope you enjoy the video. I guarantee you, you guys did not know all of these laws. All right, so let's get on with it. The first one, RVing overweight. And I don't mean that waistline, people. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> this is dangerous. And when I, we started RVing, you know, we were overweight when we went out. First thing you should do if you start RVing is go down, get your rig and get it weighed. Always stay yes. under the weight limit. And a lot of RVs have great storage, but they really, the weight that they can hold doesn't sustain the amount of storage that they have. We would bet that 90% of RVers today are way overweight by a lot. Always, always, always get your rig weighed for safety. Yep. This all is right. all your fault. All right, the next one, and hear us out here because you may be within the speed limit, but exceeding your tire rating. It's so important you not need, to speed. Well, and, and I don't mean the speed limit because you think, oh, well, I'm going under the speed limit, the sign. I'm yeah, fine. the speed limit's 70, but your tires are only rated to 55. And, and if you don't know what your max speed is in your RV, you can put your family in so much risk, especially since you're probably already RVing overweight. By these first, <laughs> Yankee bias. This next one is a bunch of baloney and that is parking your RV on your property. Yeah, this is insane, and this means that our country is completely off the rails and creating laws that make no sense. As being my land, I should be able to do whatever the hell I want to do on my land. If but, I want to keep a family member on my property and I want to put them in an RV, there's all kinds of HUD rules and municipal rules that do not allow RVs on private property. You would think that if you own the property, you can do whatever you want to it. But I digress. The point is that just because you own the land doesn't mean you are allowed to store your RV on the property. And some of them, they'll let you put the RV on the property, but only for a very short amount of time while you fill it up and, and pack it up to go. One of the things people don't realize in this country is that you're, and there's a lot of municipalities, you're not allowed to live in your RV. Yeah. There's rules against it. If they could catch you, they could throw you off. They could impound your RV. They can fine you. It's nuts. This is ridiculous. Yeah. For too many years now, Americans have been giving away more and more and more of their liberty and their power. <laughs> now you decide to read the Bible. Okay, the next one, I think people that do this, I don't know. I, I, if you do this, I judge you, okay? I judge you. No, I judge you if you do this. And that is triple towing. That's okay. just dumb. No, I mean, I get it. Like, who doesn't want to have all their toys at the same time? Like, yeah. having the boat and the RV, that's living the best life ever, right? Yeah. I get it. But, man, if it's hard enough when one thing turns, I can't imagine what happens when you add that third thing. Or the golf cart, attaching the golf cart, like, wheels down. Like, there are some crazy <laughs> things that people do. We have seen, seen some insane things in our three years of RVing full-time all over this country. There are states that allow triple towing, but just because it's allowed doesn't mean that you should do it. Yeah. It's extremely dangerous. Just a 42-foot rig fifth wheel is going to be 65, 67 feet. And then, and then to throw a boat, boat or something else onto the back of that you're just in deep, deep danger. So, and again, you may be dumb enough to try to triple toe, but don't put the general public in danger. Okay, which hand's my e bag? There you go. This is controversial again, and this one is crossing state lines with a firearm. And I'm actually gonna add crossing county lines, certain municipalities. When you're RVing full time, you don't know where you're at. I mean, you kind of know where you're at, but you don't know that this county line is like this and this city is like that and 
they're really particular about these laws and not other laws. And sometimes they want your RV, your, your firearm and your ammunition separated. Mm -hmm. It kind of also depends. Are you in a towable? Are you in a motor home? Mm -hmm. So many nuances and people so often make mistakes when it comes to this one. Yeah. And so, you know, the saying guys, when seconds count, the police are five or 10 minutes away. We're strong believers in the Second Amendment and carrying to protect yourself and your family and possibly even your neighbors, right? But, but you've got to be extremely responsible with this right that we have. You've got to know the local laws when you're crossing, like Mercedes said, not only state lines, but county lines and sometimes city lines. You could be putting yourself in deep, deep danger because you could be breaking the law, a firearms law, and not even know you're doing it. My safe word is chicken. The next one is crossing a national border with a firearm. Don't do it. Don't do it. We have an RV Odd Squad member who wrote us a three-page email telling about their horror story of going into Canada because they had a rifle in the back and another firearm. They lied to the border agent assuming that their rig was not going to get checked. Their rig was checked. Him and his wife were held there for three days, charged a hefty fine, and stuck in court in Canada for 18 months. Yeah. Now they are no longer allowed in Canada for the rest of their lives. So make sure you know what the laws are going into Canada. They do allow some hunting up into Canada, but, but this, Mexico, uh, never, don't ever, even ever, don't it. even consider it. Yeah. If you want to go across the Mexico border, rent a storage and put all your stuff you know, away in safety, but don't ever try to cross the Mexico border with a firearm. Don't do it. I'm not a Yankee. The next one, it's kind of one of those that when you do it, you kind of, you're like, ah, I already did it. Driving through tunnels with propane. Did you realize that? I didn't even think of this. You're really not supposed to have propane. It's illegal to bring propane into a tunnel. Yeah. Now, do they, do they, you know, it's one of those things where- Are they where, gonna stop you in the middle yeah, of the tunnel? It's one of those things they don't enforce it, but you could get in deep, deep trouble. Could you imagine? With that said, guys, always turn your propane yeah. off when you're traveling. Yeah, and be careful, get a gas stop. The next law, and this is only in certain states that I've heard of this, like in the Northeast, once the school season begins, there are certain campgrounds that do not allow children. This has to do more with truancy. And to be quite frank, I do not want to put my kid in public schools, but you are breaking the law when you keep, for those families that do homeschool and have their kids with them year round. Be careful where you RV. Be careful where you RV because some states are not very friendly to truancy. Mm -hmm. You think the slammer is bad? I've lived in an RV with this one for three years. <laughs> the next one breaks my heart because this is one of my favorite things to do, and that is mooch docking and boondocking in certain locations. For you RV newbies, mooch docking is basically where you plug in in like someone's front lawn, <laughs> and boondocking is where you know you're maybe parked at a rest stop or or that sort of thing, and and you just stay the night in your RV, and it's kind of like I don't know incognito camping, you know, like stealth camping. But here's the problem with it. So you have certain state laws, right? But then you have the overlay of county laws. And then above that, you have the overlay of municipal laws, right? Each municipality is gonna be different. And so maybe the county will allow you to boondock, but the specific city doesn't. Right. And a lot of this has to do with some bad campers that came before us that left messes. A lot of it also has to do with like homeless control, but there's a lot of laws, especially, is it HUD for under- Yeah, HUD has a lot feet? of stupid laws where people cannot, are not allowed to live in the RV under 400 square feet. So you gotta pay close attention to the laws, not only in the state in which you're RVing, but the county and the city, mm -hmm. because you might be breaking the law. The next one, is actually, I'm calling out the RV parks, and that is charging for electricity. Now, hear me out, okay? There are times where you will be charged like an extra $5 a night for a 50 amp spot, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those meter readings where RV parks will mark up electricity. You know, they're not an electric company. No, and they're not allowed by law to mark up the electricity, and yet a lot of RV parks do that. And so I'm not talking about the five bucks a night for an upgrade to 50 amp. I'm talking about 
when an RV park plays the role of an electric company and they're really not one. And typically you won't get uh, charged on a meter unless you stay there for more than a month. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta keep pay close attention to what they're charging you. Mm -hmm. It's illegal for them to sell electricity at a profit to you. Mm -hmm. The next one is a little controversial and that is dumping gray. And so here's why I say it's kind of controversial. There's a gray area on this one. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, some people don't see gray water as super toxic. For those of you that don't know, black water is, poop. is your, yeah. And then the gray water is like shower or dishes or that sort of thing. And they go into separate tanks. Well, some places consider the gray water toxic yes and like if it were to spill it's considered like a big deal other people are like eh, it's got soap in it it cleans itself so it just kind of depends where you stand in that it's it's a fine line but be careful where you dump your gray you could be breaking the law yeah you don't think it's dirty but it still stinks i it's don't know if you nasty. guys know it still stinks. it's still nasty <laughs> you know we've never dumped our gray outside of a dump station but some people do do it yeah a lot of places don't see it as a big deal lock them up and throw away the keys right, I can do that. <laughs> This one really stinks and it depends where you're at and it's so tricky and there's so many fine lines, but driving without a CDL. A CDL is a commercial driver's license and there are certain places where certain lengths and certain weights require you to have a CDL. Like what, we're 40 feet long, mm -hmm. 60 feet all included. Mm -hmm. We gotta be really careful in certain states because John's in CDL territory. And rightfully so though, I don't completely disagree with this because you do need some training to be driving such a huge vehicle. Yeah, we're actually proponents of getting trained to drive a rig. We get a lot of people that buy a huge 42 foot rig and they've never driven anything bigger than a small 12 or 14 foot trailer, Me, guys. not even that. Yeah. So it's so important, you know, we tell people that just go by the state that you domicile in, right? We're Your from Florida. License. My driver, our driver's license in Florida, there's no problems. We don't need a CDL. But states like California, there's laws on the books where they can suddenly decide to get you for not have it being properly licensed, even though you're licensed from a state, your home state, and they can nail you for big, big fines and actually take your RV if they decide to, you know, implement those laws. Mm -hmm. The next one is so tempting. I mean, I've been guilty of this. It's driving without a seatbelt, and I'm specifically talking about motorhomes. You see, it's really, really tempting when you're sitting down, you got your seatbelt, you're buckled up, but then you need like a little bit of water or you just want to grab a Coke or whatever. And you go back and just grab it real quick and then you run to your seat. Well, no, no, no. All the people in the motor home should have their seatbelts on or legally supposed to have their seatbelts on. Yeah, now I hated seatbelt laws when they first come out. Absolutely hated them. I ignored it on purpose because I don't want to be told by the government what don't I needed to need to do. My it's life. my life. <clears throat> but over the past 20 years, I've come around and now I buckle up just to protect myself so I can help Mercedes or Sage get out of the car if there's an accident. You sound so noble. I buckle up for you. Well, I, 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 it's my choice of whether I want to buckle up or not. No, but it's true. Like you get a little wiser and you're like, eh, I might I'll as well buckle up. up. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to take care of my chickens? The next one, uh, this is, we're borderline here. It's the 183 day rule. You see, let's say that you RV full time and you work camp and let's say you travel to where the work is, right? Let's say you get a really good job opportunity and you end up staying in the same location for seven months. Well, guess what? Most states have a rule that if you stay in that state for longer than six months or 183 days, you have to pay taxes to that state. You are now considered a resident, guys. Even if your domicile, your driver's license, your insurance is all from another state. So be careful how long you camp at certain locations because that could impact where you pay taxes. Yeah, in Alabama, we know that is six months, mm -hmm. but we also know that in Florida, they let you get away with 11 months. This is what our meeting is like. The next one, it, it depends and that's bringing your dog to a national park. Now there are some places where there's like set trails that are not super in the wilderness that yeah, the dogs are fine. But there's a lot of places, national and state parks, where you're really not supposed to bring your pets because 
I guess the domestic pets and then the wildlife, it's just not a good combination. Mm -hmm. And so you really got to find out depending on where you're at, but don't just assume that you can and don't just assume that you can't. Yeah, with, with phones nowadays, guys, you can do a quick search and you look at the rules of the park that you want to go into. The next one that, I know you hate this one, what? but we'll bring in your dogs into another country. This and, is so stupid. No, but listen, so even if you're just traveling down to Mexico or you're swooping up to Canada, there are certain laws that Canada has or that Mexico has that you need to obey. Like you need to have a lot of paperwork on your animal. Not just that, I learned this the hard way. I got Skippy like all the shots and stuff and I asked for paperwork because we were gonna travel for a long trip. But it turns out that the paperwork from the veterinarian needs to be very recent yeah. when you cross. So getting like the stamp of approval in January means nothing in April or May. Right. So not only do you need to make sure you have all the necessary paperwork, you need to make sure that you have the necessary paperwork that hasn't expired depending on where you're going. So when you RV and you cross country lines, make sure that you have all the paperwork. The next one, I, I'm guilty of this, is feeding the wildlife. I feed, I feed the chickens. Chickens? Um, chickens and wildlife? Yeah, wild they, chickens now? They're domestic. Yeah, they're kind of Whatever. domesticated. No, but sometimes, remember the squirrels at Royal Coachman yeah. that if you left any food on the picnic they'd table and went away, it. they'd like have yeah. a have a buffet. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, feeding the wildlife is a big one. So yep. and, and it's so easy because they look so cute and they look hungry and you just want to feed them. But, but it is illegal. Yeah. And, and it's bad for the wildlife. It can harm them too. The next one um, kind of more applies to people like us. But uh, flying those drones in a lot of areas, two things. Number one, sometimes some of the prettiest places that you want to fly your drone are like right next to a military base. State and national parks. <laughs> and then the next one is the state and national parks. You know, like the most beautiful, beautiful state park uh, in Colorado. We absolutely loved it. Right next to NORAD. Just as everything else is in this country, there's becoming more and more and more and more rules every day. So if you have a drone with you, just do your research, mm -hmm. do your homework, and don't put yourself in danger of a huge fine or possibly jail. Mm -hmm. The next one has really broken a lot of our viewers' hearts, and that is staying overnight at Walmart. You see, there was this wonderful thing about staying overnight at Walmart that you could go get groceries. It was like a rite of passage. Yeah, you haven't really RV'd until you stayed overnight at a Walmart, but people have kind of abused that and you know homeless populations have kind of abused that and and so now it's very very hard to find a walmart that will allow you to overnight park yeah and this isn't a decision by walmart the corporation they do make that decision but mostly it's municipalities that now make it illegal for walmart to let people stay in their parking lots mm -hmm. and this is one that truckers enjoy too mm -hmm. i mean it just uh, sucks the guy yeah. people just ruin things for everybody but just make sure you're not staying at a place that you're not allowed to stay at because they are starting to hand out fines and people are getting in trouble for it the next one, and this one I kind of understand now. At the time I was like, don't tell me how to live my life. But now I'm like, eh, auto formers. You see, mm. long story short, auto formers uh, protect your RV by making sure that your RV gets clean power. But it kind of does so at the expense of the power of everyone else because it like sucks a lot of power. and. So it's kind of controversial. Yeah, we have an auto former, and um, this is a rule in the new code book that yeah. you're not supposed to do this. Some RV parks that have dilapidated power, they really don't appreciate they don't, auto formers. And, they, and these these people know what to look for now when you see an auto former. So now RVers are hiding their auto former within their RVs. Yeah. Um, I don't think they should be illegal. I think it's the responsibility of the campground to provide clean power to not put people in dan danger. But we love our auto former and we will use it to keep ourselves from getting in danger. The next law that a lot of our viewers break, flashing their brights in the rain. Yeah, and this actually will drive you a little bit crazy. Um, some laws, like in Florida, you should be turning your lights on if it is raining, always. Yeah. But then you got those people in a heavy rainstorm that will put their flashers on and that can freak people out behind you because they think suddenly 
they've got to stop quick so they'll slam the brakes on causing a pile up. Yeah. So I believe this is a really good law. This law makes a lot of sense to keep all of us out of danger in bad weather. Mm -hmm. Well, and you speak to another point in Florida when it's raining, the speed limit drops 10 miles an hour. Yes. If you don't know that, right. you know, that's another one. Yeah. And Florida being such a transitory state, a lot oh. of people don't realize this. So Worst again, drivers just, ever. just check the laws in the state. You cross yeah. the state line, just do a quick search, you yeah. know, and find out what the laws in that state are. The next one, and I'm so sorry to pick on California. Using your generator in California. Yeah. And I don't know what's grandfathered in and not, so um, I'm not trying to make a blanket statement, but you know, with that push to go greener and greener, you're, you're having people that judge generators more and more. But the reality is that solar is super expensive. Is it quiet? Yes. Is it awesome? Absolutely. But it's really expensive and generators are super affordable in, in comparison. Uh, it's a scary idea for RVers because most RVers do get their power, especially boondockers, mm -hmm. from generators. Yeah. As with everything, guys, we'll adjust to it. But it's like yeah. instead of just killing it and cutting it off, there has to be a time of transition. We want beautiful skies and clean water and clean I air like, for our I kids. I like breathing. Yeah. But there's, you know, there's got to be a transition time you just can't stop it because the shock of the system itself is going to cause all of us a lot of grief i dislike 90 percent of all of our political leaders they are psychopathic well, they're, they're psychopathic control freaks and once the government takes powers they never give that power back to the people yeah so don't break these laws, RVers, and make sure you subscribe to this channel, even though he's crazy. Don't worry. He equally hates everyone. He's just as grumpy to the left side as he is the right side. So, so I don't, don't like worry. politicians. And he doesn't like people either, which is exactly why you should subscribe to this channel. As always, we'll see you in the next video. She doesn't, she doesn't like below yeah. the chin. Sorry. <laughs> because I'm, yeah.